The sweep feature, which can either be a boss or a cut, is created by moving a profile along a path. The profile and the path must be created in separate sketches. Swept features can use 3D curves or model edges as the path, and the sweep section can be made to vary as it moves along the path using guide curves. In this lesson, you will finish this fan cover by creating a single spoke using the sweep feature. Then by using the circular pattern, we'll create multiple instances of the spoke to finish the fan cover model. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. Here we have a start of the model of our fan cover, but we need to create some spokes. We can do this by using the sweep feature to create a single spoke, and then using the circular pattern tool to fill in the rest of the instances. To create a sweep feature, we first need to create two sketches. One is for the profile of the shape, and the other is for the path of the sweep. To make things a little easier in our selecting process, let's show the sketch profiles for the two currently existing geometry features. So expanding the rim, feature, we can click on the sketch and click on show. And for the faceplate, same thing, expand that, click on the sketch and go to show. So we'll now see the two sketch profiles for those geometries. We can also change our view in the graphics area by going up to the top here where it's got the display style, clicking on the arrow and then going to hidden lines visible. So this will give you a bit more of a see-through look. This view is useful when you want to try and click things that would normally be covered by geometry. So first, let's begin by creating the sketch profile that will control the path of our sweep. Looking at our model, we're going to need a sweep profile that's going to start from here and then sweep around and finish on this side. So if you're thinking about what plane we can use uh, to create our first sketch. We obviously can't create a front plane or we can't use a front plane and we could use a right plane, but our sketch elements aren't in the right position. But if we look at the top plane, that lines up with everything we've got created already. So by clicking on the top plane and going to sketch and we can begin creating our path. Also, if you want SolidWorks to orientate your view whenever you create a new sketch like mine does, if you go up to the top where it has your options, just go into your options, look for sketch, and this first option here, auto rotate view normal to sketch plane on sketch creation and sketch edit. So just make sure you have a tick box in there. That just means that whenever you create a sketch or go to edit a sketch, it's going to bring your view normal or flat against that sketch plane. And it just makes it easier to, or kind of saves a step from having to do change your view anyway. So anyway, let's start creating our sweep profile. So we're going to use a standard line starting from this point, we're going to go across, and then we want to bring the mouse back so it starts to sweep out a angle for us. And using our inference line, so you should see something perpendicular like this. Actually, we want it a bit more up here, about here. And then our final line is going to go up to this edge. So we now need to define this path with some dimensioning. So go to your dimension tool. This line that we created, this first one is going to be 21 millimeters. And then this dimension is going to be from our line to the inside edge. And this is going to be four millimeters. And you should have a fully defined sketch by this stage. You will also notice that our path starts from the inside of the model geometry and ends inside the model geometry as well. This is good practice when creating features such as sweeps because you want to make sure the entire spoke is going into the model as much as possible. If you finish it on the face, it may end up creating a little bit of a gap and you might not see that without zooming in really closely. So always go sort of beyond the face that you need to create the sweep to. So with this sketch created, we can exit this and go back to an isometric view. And we're ready to now create our profile. So for our profile, we need to create it to be perpendicular to our sweep, in most cases anyway. So in this case, we're going to use the right plane to start our sketch. So we can click on the right plane and go to sketch. And you may want to rotate your view just a little bit so we can see this inside part here. We're going to use a, an ellipse. 
and we're going to start from this point, this midpoint here. And you can just drag it up to define our first point and then drag the second point anywhere you like. Clicking OK. We are going to then dimension this. So our width is going to be 2.5 and our height is going to be 1. So you should have some a shape looking like this. And we can see it is not fully defined yet, even though we have dimensioned it. So if you just grab some points and move them around, we can see that there is no relation back to this center point. So we can just make sure nothing is selected. Click this point, hold down control, click our center point, and just use a horizontal relation. And that should make our sketch fully defined. Once it is, we can exit the sketch. Go back to the isometric view. We no longer need our hidden lines to be shown, so we can drop that down and go back to shaded with edges. And we also don't need our sketches showing anymore either. So back in the rim, we can hide this sketch. And for the faceplate, we can hide that sketch. This sketch three is also no longer needed. So we can just click on that and go to hide. With our sweep profile and sweep path ready to use, we can now use our sweep feature. So we can do this by going to the top menu, to the insert, and then boss space, and then sweep. Or you can just go to the features tab in the command manager and click on the sweep swept boss base. And when you do that, it will activate and you should see the property manager on the side. So in this property manager, you'll have all the options and parameters for controlling your swept feature. The first option is to select a sweep profile, and the second option is to select the path. So making sure the first selection box is activated. We can either click on it, but if it's too small to, or too hard to zoom in, you can just expand this, hovering the mouse over the sketches to see what is highlighting. We can see that is the profile, so we can click on that. It should automatically move to the path selection, and we can just repeat the process, highlight the sketch we want, and then click on it. And you should see a preview showing of our swept feature once those two are picked. This is also where it's useful to rename features or sketches. Uh, if I had renamed these before creating the swept feature and renamed the sketch to sweep path or and the other one to sweep profile, it would have been easier to identify them and select them during our selection process. But anyway, going back to our property manager, we can see there are some additional options for controlling our swept feature. There are options for guide curves, options, start and end tangencies, thin features, feature scope, and curvature displays. So these all have different effects on our swept feature. Expand the options box, and you can see there is a profile orientation. If you click on that to drop it down, you have two options, which is follow path and keep normal constant. For our demonstration, just have follow path selected. The next one is profile twist. So this will create a twisting effect of your profile as it follows along the path. Here you have multiple options, but also just make sure this is selected as none. The main thing we wanna make sure of is the merge result is ticked in this option. This will mean that once the spoke is created with our swept feature, as it is joining currently two solid bodies, it's going to merge them together and create one solid body. As for a lot of these options, I'm not going to cover them in detail. Uh, it's worth just spending some time with the sweep feature and playing around with these options to see what effects it has on your swept profile and learning the tool that way. The rest of the settings don't need to be adjusted for this exercise, so we can now click on the OK button to accept our swept feature. We are going to also rename this swept feature by either slow double clicking on it, or you can just click on it and then push F2 on the keyboard. And we're going to rename this to spoke. Next, we're going to finish our part by using a circular pattern to fill in the rest of the spoke instances. To do this, we just go to the Features tab of the Command Manager, look for the Linear Pattern, drop that down and go to Circular Pattern. For our direction, we can select this cylindrical face and that will determine its central axis. And our features, we can select our spoke. For our instances, we're going to change that to 16 and the degrees is going to be 360. We can click OK and there you should have a completed fan cover. 
Finally, to edit an existing swept feature, all you need to do is click on it in the Feature Manager tree and go to Edit Feature. From here, you could make some changes such as selecting a new path or a new profile or adjusting any of the other options in the Property Manager. In this case, we don't need any changes. We can just click on the X to cancel that. And that brings us to the end of the lesson. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of options available in the sweep feature, and it's worth taking the time just to play around with profiles and guidelines and all your additional options to control the sweep and just learn the effects it has on your swept feature. It's quite a useful tool to know this one as it can create some really complex shapes and some quite organic shapes as well. So that's the end of this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.